In this video, we're going to look at a feature of Photoshop and many other Creative Cloud applications that will save you time and, to be honest, will make you wonder how you worked without it. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe Libraries. Libraries appear across the Creative Cloud and in Adobe Express. More of that in a little while. Libraries can keep your assets close to hand no matter what you're doing or perhaps, more importantly, where you are. There's a lot to libraries, so here's a menu of what we're covering and where to find it. If you're new to libraries, I'd recommend starting at the start. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see how we can use the assets. Here in Photoshop CC, I've got the tip scroll logo and design sheet designed for us by Griffin Designs, link in the description. There's a lot of elements here that I would like to use regularly or even share with others. I'll open the libraries panel. For me, it's here, nice and handy. But if you can't see it, then go to a window and then down to libraries. Of course, I've already got a tip scroll library ready. Now, by clicking the plus symbol, I have a choice. Create new library or new library from document. Creating a new library from a document is usually a good idea. It does a very good job. But for us here, we're going to work through it stage by stage, just so we can see what's happening. It doesn't always get it 100%, but it's certainly a very good start for making a library. Let's make a new library here, though. So let's go to the graphics folder here in the layers panel. And it's as simple as clicking and dragging across and dropping them into the library. And we can see they're being added immediately that means they're now accessible throughout the creative cloud and creative cloud express let's add some colors to the library I've got some colors here if i click on the plus you'll see that i can add a fill color i can always come back and add a stroke color but i can add a fill color here okay for those reading the subtitles i know that color should be color but I use the same spelling as Adobe does in the English International Interface. Okay, I can work through this adding the five colors really easy. Next, if I select the layer that includes the font, when I click on the plus here, I can now add a character style. Something to note here, if I right click on this, you can see that I can get info. We can see that the size is 36 points. Now, a word of caution here, if you're like me. Because this is set as a point size, if you attribute this to smaller text, the text is going to get bigger. And if you attribute it to bigger text, it's going to get smaller, as you might expect. Uh, it can be quite annoying, though, because sometimes all you want to do is just put the right font on. But to my knowledge, that's not something you can do, but if you know different, please leave a comment. Let me know. I would love to know. Okay, let's get back into this. Let's have a look at a quick example. This document, I've got the start of a YouTube cover with some text already in it. I'm going to attribute the character style to the text. Now, the first thing that happens is it disappears because this text is now black on a black background. I can assign a color to it using my swatches. I've got two choices here. I can either click on it like so, or I can right click and rather handily apply a color overlay, which is really helpful. Okay, let's go up to the character and then I can return this to where it needs to be, which is 110 and 110 in the leading. There we go. Add in the logo is just a case of dragging and dropping, and this may look familiar to you. You may think it looks like a smart object, and that's because it is a smart object. There you go. Look at that. Easy as that. Next, I'd like to add a gradient to the background. And bear with me on this. There is a reason why I'm doing this. I'm going to use some of the colors that we've already got handy. So if I take the dark color and click on that, not on a text layer or anything that can attribute the color to click on that you'll see that the swatch here becomes the dark gray color i'm going to reverse it and use the lighter one so now i've got lighter and darker let's get the gradient tool and a new layer 
and then draw out a quick gradient. There we go. Now it might be that I want to use this frequently and it's just something I've just created. Not a problem. Let's take that, drag it in and drop it into the library. Simple as that. I might want to rename this. All I've got to do is double click in where it says layer two and I'm going to call this BG grad. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to press tab there just to uh, come out of it. There, easy. Now I can change any of the names in the library. So I could change this one to logo with feet and logo with text, for example, header text, header to text, anything like that. You can also change the name of the colors. At the moment, by default, they have the hex code and I find that very useful. And you can see also that we got the RGB in there as well. Really helpful information. So I'm gonna leave that there, good. Next, let's take a look at grouping. At the moment, they're grouped by default. Works out really well. It's put everything where it needs to be. That spelling of the word color may be annoying me. If it is, let's do something about that. So I'm gonna go back to my document, it's a bit nicer. And I'm gonna to come to these colors. So what I can do here is using this icon, I click on that and I can say a custom group, please. There we go. You see that I can also sort as well by what they are. I like it alphabetically, so I'm going to keep it as that. I'm next going to select all the colors, click and then shift click, just like you do in other programs, and then click on the folder here to make a new group and call it color. Color, there we go. And again, press tab to accept it. So it might be that I use colors in different ways. I might have a secondary color, for example. So let's do that. I'm going to click on the dark one and then shift click on the last one, the pink one there. And again, click on the folder here and call this secondary color. There we go. And tab again. Now you may see that this is indented. That's because it's inside the color folder. So I can then go there and there and I can just tuck those out the way and I can do that again with any other groups I can just make groups inside groups inside groups inside groups makes things a whole lot easier that's for sure for now I'm going to go back to the type just because that's how it is by default okay enough creating the library let's look at where else we can use it here it is in Premiere Pro great for adding branding to videos for example here we are in illustrator perfect for adding to an illustration or adding an illustration to the library okay we're not going to go through them all but no you can use and add to libraries in all of these applications at the top of the video i mentioned adobe's express in this app accessing libraries is easy in CC Express, I'll create a new asset from scratch with a color background. Let's make it an Instagram post. I'll delete the text for now. Next, I'll click Add and then Photos. Hidden under the three dots, if I tap it, is Libraries. I'll tap that and then into Tippy. There are all the assets we just created. I'll add a logo, tap Open and there it is ready to be sized and positioned now for branding in adobe express there's a much quicker and easier way and we'll do that in another video but for now know that you can get to your libraries on the go just as quickly as at your desk this brings me to adding new assets on the go using adobe capture i've not got time to go into everything in capture in this video but know that you can capture audio, shapes, colors, type, materials, brushes, looks, and create and save patterns. In this example, let's add a color. Let's say that our client, Tippy, has seen a color they like, or maybe it's a bride who wants to share her bouquet's color. Whatever the reason, a photo has been sent to you. You can also do this live, by the way. In our example, Tippy has sent a photo of a cushion in their office. They say they like the yellow in it. Could we incorporate it somewhere? Opening Capture and then tapping Create next to Colors 
we can load in a photo from our gallery. Capture looks for prominent colours and then makes a palette. We can change this if we like by dragging the points to where we want them. We don't need the floor colour in this example. Tap the tick, adjust if necessary, and tap save. Name it and choose where to save it. In our case, to the library, Tippy. Tap save. Depending on your connections to the net, this will instantly, or at some point of reconnection, synchronize with your Creative Cloud and library, making this accessible wherever you are. Let's take a look on the desktop. And there it is under color themes. Like with single swatches, I can left click on the color to apply it, or I can right click to apply it as a color overlay. I'll be covering Adobe Capture and Adobe Express more in the future. For now, that's libraries. If you have any questions or suggestions or a tip I haven't covered here, drop them into the comments. I read every single one. Liking this video helps other people find it and me and the channel, while subscribing keeps you in the loop whenever I add a new video. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.